I'm going to offer you four filters to help you to accept the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's something you like or something that really hurts you or your Muslim neighbors. Any difficulty that comes your way, if you pass it through these four filters, by the time it gets to the other end, what started off as something quite toxic, something quite heavy, something dark and painful that was weighing you down, pass it through filter one and then the second, third and fourth, and what you will get on the other side is contentment with the qadr of Allah and something that will elevate you instead of pulling you down. Filter number one is to remember that Allah Almighty is aware. Filter number two, to remember that Allah Almighty is just. Filter number three is to know that Allah Almighty is wise. Filter number four is to know that Allah Almighty can do whatever He wants in His kingdom. So I give you a demonstration of how these four filters work? Let's take a problem that we are all struggling with. The genocide in Gaza, specifically the global abandonment of those Muslims, and specifically the killing of children that has reached horrific levels. Run out of words, really. Recently, somebody messaged me online and said that I, alhamdulillah, have reverted to the religion of Islam a few months ago by way of a video that you posted thanking the doctors and the journalists and the people of Christ. And I thank Allah Almighty that He has given me Islam through those righteous people. But this person said, nevertheless, it is so much content and it is so graphic. The barbarity is so extreme that now I have taken one or two steps back as I ask myself, where is this God that I have submitted? It seems that they have been abandoned even by those in the heaven. So let's take this as a problem that is challenging us, now our Iman, and pass it through these filters and see what comes out the other end. What was filter number one? Allah Jalla Jalaluhu is aware. So for those who go through a hard time and the first question they find themselves asking is, can't Allah Almighty see what is happening? Have you heard this knee-jerk reaction? Can't He see? Can't He hear? We say no. Filter number one says and argues that there is no heaven that obscures another heaven from the sight of of Allah. There is no planet that obscures another planet from the vision of Allah. There is no sound or the complaint of a believer, the screams of a child that drowns out the sound of another who is doing the same. Allah is aware. He said, Nothing on the ground, nothing on the land, nothing in the heavens is absent from the knowledge of Allah. And Allah Almighty, He says, for those who are in doubt, with Him are the keys to the unseen. No one has knowledge of those keys but Him. And He knows everything on land and in the sea. And there is not a leaf of a tree that falls down from anywhere except that He has knowledge of it. And there is no grain somewhere in the darknesses of the land, Allah says. Or anything moist or dry, illa fi kitabin mubin, except that it is with Allah Almighty in a clear record. So this is filter number one. It says Allah Almighty is certainly aware. He can see what is happening. Filter number two. We said Allah is just. When you ask the question, where is the justice in what is happening? How is this fair? Tell me. We establish a principle. Allah Almighty is the most just. He said, Inna Allah, la yadlimu Allah does not do injustice, even the weight of an atom. Allah Almighty said, Wa ma rabbuka Allah does not do injustice to the people. Allah Almighty said, Wa la yadlimu rabbuka ahada. Allah does not do injustice justice to anyone. So the issue is that man, he likes to deflect his problems on Allah Almighty. Most important thing for most of people is to just not take responsibility for their actions. To put the blame on someone else, on God Almighty, but not on themselves. So when we do wrong to someone, we say God decreed it. And when someone does wrong to us, we say, why did God decree it? One way or another, we will find a way to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah Almighty is the most just. But did the most just ever tell you and I that this world of ours is a place of jaza, a place of reward and comfort and recompense? No. In fact, Allah said that this world is a place of bala, a place of test and tribulation. That's what He told us. Perfect justice is reserved for the day of judgment. Did Allah Almighty promise us that the life of this world will be a place of perfect justice for us to start now doubting Allah Almighty? He never gave us that promise to begin with. If Allah had told us that in the life of this world there is perfect justice, I get you. I know why some of us would doubt it. But did Allah ever make that promise? No. He has given you and I an irada, a will to make decisions as we please, as we choose. Yes, our will is connected to the will of Allah Almighty. We don't escape His knowledge and His power, but He has given us a will. You support Philistine with your will, you pray with your will, and we disobey Allah with our will. No one is controlling us like puppets. So we ask, where is the justice? Allah has given us a will. And on Yawm al Qiyamah, the day of judgment, that is when perfect justice will be dispensed. That's what He told us. He said, We will establish the scales of justice on the day of judgment. 
فلا تظلموا نفس شيئا. He said that is when no soul will be done injustice to. وإن كان مثقال حبة من خردل أتينا بها عن even if it is something as small as the weight of a mustard seed, Allah said we will bring it on that day. وكفى بنا حاسبين and sufficient we are as accountants. Sufficient we are as reckoners. And there will be accountability for those children who have died. Allah said وإذا الموؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت when the girl who was buried alive will be asked for what sin was she killed. Allah is speaking to that need to know inside of you what will happen to all of those children who were killed apparently in vain in dunya. Allah said there will be a question about that in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So don't judge the justice of Allah Almighty on the basis of a temporary world that lasts for 60, 70, 80 years at a stretch for you and I. Judge the justice of Allah Almighty where he told us justice will be and that is when eternity begins and that is death and beyond. That is filter number two, Allah is just. Filter number three, we said is what? Allah is wise. You are insulted. You are upset. You're massively offended when someone says you did something without wisdom. You did it for no purpose. There's no reason why you did that. Say, Astaghfirullah. I'm just acting in play. I'm just acting in vain. Engineers are offended by that. Politicians are offended by that. Doctors are offended by that claim. You did that for no reason. No, I did it with wisdom. What then of Allah Almighty who calls himself Al-Hakim, the khabir the most wise. Had Allah Almighty removed the layers and the veils that is covering the wisdom behind what is happening and the tragedy, including the killing of children, and we were to see the vast network of wisdom that is happening behind the scenes without us realizing because all we could see was limbs and blood if we were to see what is happening in the back end of the machinery the indescribable rewards are being given out the places in jannah that are being reserved the homes the palaces that are being furnished the sins that are being erased the comfort that is being given on yom al-qiyamah for their suffering the redemption of millions of people the fast tracking of the awakening of the ummah that needed thousands of years prior to this the expedite of our leadership to prepare a center stage, we would bow our heads in shame before Allah Almighty forever questioning His wisdom. And believe you me, we would wish that the onslaught would continue if we were to realize some of what is happening behind the scenes that is known to Allah Almighty. You and I see a pixel, Allah sees the entire picture. You and I are watching a scene from a very long movie, Allah sees the eternal script happened in eternity before it and what will happen after it till eternity. Allah is wise and Allah Almighty has spoken about His wisdom when it comes to suffering children in the Quran, but we don't read the Quran in this contemplative way, unfortunately. So we don't find answers. The Quran has spoken about suffering children. How does the Quran address it? Take the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, a child when he was thrown into a well, sold into slavery, separated from his parents. Imagine what could be worse for a child than to be sold into slavery and taken from country to country. Yet Allah Almighty, he said, in the same verse that speaks about this tragedy to this minor, Allah Almighty said, وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Thus we established Yusuf on the land. وَلِنُعَلِّمَهُ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَدِيثِ So that we may teach him from the interpretation of dreams. وَاللَّهُ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ And Allah has full control of his affairs. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most people, they don't know. In the same ayah that tells us of the suffering of this child, Allah said, I have full control over my universe. I know what I am doing. And the suffering of that child became the cause of the redemption and the saving of an entire Egyptian community a few decades later. Just as there was a reason then that we were told by way of revelation, why do we think there is not a reason now? This is not the justification of the killing of the children, God forbid. This is not the normalizing of the sight of suffering children, God forbid. This is the idea of knowing that there is a wisdom whether you realize it or not. The Quran has given us case studies to prove this point. And how many children were killed at the edge of a knife at the time of Musa alayhi salam when he was still breastfeeding? How many Israelite mothers suffered bereavement at the very same moment of the joy of conception? How many? One of the guards of the Pharaoh waiting outside the house just to check if it's a boy, he comes in and passes the knife over his soft robe. How many thousands died at this way? Yet what does Allah say? In the beginning of Surah Al-Qasas, speaking about the killing of these children, He tells us, despite the pain and the tragedy, there was some silver lining. He said in the ayah after, listen, because this is us. He said, Allah said, we wanted to confer our favor upon those who are oppressed on the land. We wanted to make them leaders. 
المساكين and we wanted to make them the heirs the inheritors ونمكن لهم في الارض and we wanted to establish them on the land ونري فرعون وهامان وجنودهما منهم ما كانوا يحذرون and we wanted the pharaoh and haman and all of their soldiers to see the very thing that they used to fear is this not a description of us from the ashes of all of those children who were killed Musa would rise and it would be the redemption of his entire community and I tell you Allah Almighty is forging leaders for this ummah because he is wise and he has promised us that from this tragedy and pain we will come to see the wisdom of his decrees filter number four Allah does what he wants in his universe it's good to inquire about wisdom it's good to try to find answers that will set to your heart that's fine as long as you acknowledge what you and I are within this vast domain we're just a speck remember this is the kingdom of Allah this is his sky this is his terrain it's the body that he has loaned us this is his air that we are breathing and he as the creator has the right to choose how he manages his universe he said inna allaha yaf'alu ma yurid Allah does what he wills kadhalik allahu yakhluqu ma yasha Allah creates as he wills inna allaha yaf'alu ma yasha Allah does what he wants la yus'alu amma yaf'al wa hum yus'alun he is not to be asked about what he does he is the one who shall ask for those who are still not convinced let them find the land that does not belong to Allah let them find a universe that is not owned by him let them find air that is not controlled and gifted by him and let them do what they need to do there reality is that every land every air every sky belongs to Allah there is no escaping this reality and these are four filters pass any difficulty that you go through through them and you will come out with this natija this consequence Allah Almighty is most wise and you will submit to the qadr of Allah his decrees